Tanking has been a huge conversation in the NBA over the last handful of seasons, really over the last decade or so, because teams have never been more egregious in terms of trying to lose games and intentionally trying to lose the last 20 games of the year to get better draft positioning. But this season, tanking is going to look much, much different. Really quickly, though, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Price Picks. Now, if you've never done Price Picks before, the NBA is back, which means it is a great time to get started. And I've got a great offer for you as well including a Steph Curry free square, which I'll get into a little bit later. Now, how prize picks works is you go onto their site and you pick between two and six players against their projection. You see these numbers and you pick more or less for between two and six players. And if you get these selections correct, you can win up to 25 times your money. Obviously for me right now, I'm gonna be focusing on the NBA, but you can combine that with other sports as well. They've got all kinds of different numbers that you can select more or less for. And that's really what makes it fun is you have so many different options and Price Picks is always on top of the promotions. Right now, they have a Steph Curry free square for opening night, where obviously you pick more than this square right here. And it's essentially a free selection on your two to six players. You don't have to compete against anyone else. It's just you against these numbers. And I have another offer for you as well. Right now, first time users can get a 100% instant deposit up to $100 when you use code sporting. And that link is in the description. Again, that is a 100% deposit match up to $100 for first time users. And you get that Steph Curry free square to get you started with prize picks as the NBA season gets going. And thank you again to prize picks for sponsoring this video. Now to be clear, uh, tanking is still gonna happen. Uh, there's almost no rule. There's nothing that the league can do. There's almost no situation in which you're gonna have zero teams tanking during an NBA season. That's just the nature of how the NBA works, where you, you look at the Spurs, you get one guy and then overnight everything changes for your franchise. And all you had to do was lose a handful of games at the end of the season to increase your odds in order to try and get the first overall pick. And obviously over the years, we've seen some things from the league where they're trying to deter teams from tanking, uh, changing the lottery odds. Uh, this year, trying to make sure that teams aren't just resting their best guys and, and cutting down on load management, which has been a big, uh, you know, kind of avenue in which teams are able to tank and then obviously they're trying to continue to increase the value of the regular season as well with the in-season tournament with uh, games played totals required for winning awards or making all NBA teams. These are things that players really care about. And it's going to be difficult, for example, like like Portland did at the end of last year, where they told Dame, hey, just sit out. It's fine. We'll sit, sit you the last 12 games of the year because we want a better draft pick. It's going to be harder now for teams to convince players of that because these guys want to make all NBA teams. They want to get awards and accolades because it helps them earn more money. It helps them earn bigger contracts. But that's not the biggest part of all of this. The thing that is going to deter tanking more than anything else is the thing that always deters tanking more than anything else. And that is a bad draft class. This is not a great draft class as of now. Guys can always emerge. We can always have, you know, like for example, in 2013, everybody thought it was a terrible class and Giannis was in the class and he's one of the best players in the league and MVP and someone that is going to probably continue to dominate the league for the next, you know, handful of seasons. So that can always be a thing, but nobody knew who Giannis was at the time that teams were actively trying to lose games during the season. So if a draft class, generally speaking, looks pretty weak, teams are not going to be as motivated to tank. And that comes off of a season in which we saw probably the most aggressive Regis tanking arguably that we've ever seen because everybody knew how good Victor Wembanyama was and obviously only team in this case San Antonio was going to end up with him but all these teams wanted to give themselves the best chance possible of getting him and so they lost a lot of games but the difference in draft classes is as big of a gap from one year to the next arguably that we've ever seen actually I don't even think that's an argument it definitely is and as a result teams are just not going to be as motivated to lose games the other part of this is there's a handful of teams in the league that have kind of been on this semi-intentional losing streak for a couple of seasons now like a lot of teams that have been you know in the bottom five bottom six of the standings in each conference have been down there for a while and if you're ever going to have a season where maybe you move some stuff to try and go a little bit more all in or you're more aggressive and trying to win games or you're trying to really push for the postseason because that would mean a lot for your young core this would be a season in which to do it assuming that by the end of the year none of the players in either the college level g league or internationally have stepped up and really established themselves as someone that's worthy of being the number one overall pick in a given draft class, this would be a great year to really test and see exactly what your team has. And when you look at the standings, when you look at the young cores and the amount of talent that's developed around the league, there's really only a handful of teams that I can't really foresee a path for them to be like a 40 to 42 win team. Charlotte, for example, is starting to get some buzz because Steve Clifford has done this before and, and helped some teams overperform in Charlotte. I don't think they're 
really that talented. Uh, I'm still very much in wait and see mode in terms of what Brandon Miller is going to provide. They seem to always deal with injuries. I still really like LaMelo, of course, but this feels like an incomplete roster relative to the rest of the East. Detroit is another team that I don't really see a path to 40 to 42 wins despite them, you know, having some talent. Guys like Kate Cunningham, obviously they have one of the Thompson twins. There's talent there, but relative to the rest of the Eastern Conference, it, it would be a complete shock, even under new head coach Monty Williams, if they were able to win 40 games. And then Portland, I think, is another team that, I mean, I really like Scoot. I like Aiton. I like Jeremy Grant, but uh, like Grant's probably going to be on a different team by the deadline. They're relying on a good amount of young guys and more specifically a 19-year-old point guard. Throughout the history of the league, 19-year-old point guards, 20-year-old guys leading teams in the backcourt, having so much offense run through them the way that Scoot is going to this year. Generally speaking, those kinds of teams don't win a lot of games. Those are really the three teams that I look at and I say, I have a hard time believing that they're really going to, you know, potentially push for a playoff spot. The other 27 teams in the league, I'm fully confident there's a scenario in which they could make the playoffs. And that means, one, the league's really talented. There's there's so many good, especially young teams around the league. But also, again, there's going to be a lot of incentive for these teams to really figure out who their main guys are because there really isn't as much of a quote unquote punishment of really trying to go for it this season because you're not losing out on a potential generational prospect in the draft. Or at least that's how it seems right now. And teams like Houston that were aggressive in the offseason adding veterans, they're going to want to try and push for the playoffs. This is a team that's been losing a ton of games over the last couple of seasons. They're going to want to try and make this happen. They want to know who they have, who their main guys are. Of course, with the MA Udoka now there as head coach, bringing in all these guys in the offseason. That's the kind of team that I'm going to be keeping an eye on. Same thing with Oklahoma City. I I'm really excited to see what they look like in this kind of situation where there are actually expectations for them. I think that their, their young core, if healthy, is, is the best in the league. And in terms of teams that are like up and coming, haven't made the postseason yet, they, I really truly believe they're going to be pushing more for like a top six seed in the West if they're healthy rather than a team closer towards the play-in, which is where they've been uh, last year. And there's just a lot of teams like that. New Orleans, for example, who's 27 and 13, best record in the league through the first 40 games of the year last year. And then they had injury issues. Like there's going to be a lot of teams like that that are going to be pushing for more success than maybe you would normally simply because not only there's you're less incentivized to tank because of the way that the lottery odds work and because of some of these things that the league has tried to implement, but also because there's just not that much of a, of a reward at the end of that of getting the first overall pick because the class is so weak. And it's going to be interesting because the league has put in all these rules over the last couple of seasons with this goal in mind. And to a large part, it's going to look successful, right? Like it's going to look like, oh, they added the in-season tournament and they changed the lottery odds and they did this and that. And the league has actually done a good job of quote unquote, getting rid of tanking. I think that's going to be a storyline for a lot of people during the year, when in reality, the best thing you can do to deter tanking is have a bad draft class. And yes, the in-season tournament might help in some way. I think they're still trying to figure out exactly, you know, the details on that over the next couple of seasons in terms of how to really incentivize teams to care about the in-season tournament. Obviously, the lottery odds have helped in certain draft classes, but tanking is by no means going anywhere. I just think it's going to look different this season where we could be 50, 60 games into the year and there's really only, you know, three or four teams that are truly trying to be bad at the end of the year because of the minimum games threshold for rewards, because of not being able to rest players in some of those bigger games, as well as just not having that prize of the number one overall pick. And I'm really interested to see exactly how that works out. And mostly I'm excited to see hopefully an increased value in the regular season. I think that's something that the league really wants to try and make happen. Of course, they want to de-incentivize tanking. They don't want teams to be intentionally losing, but they also really want their fans to care about the last 20 games of the year like there when you compare it to something like the NFL or something like teams or fan bases are really passionately paying attention to the last five games of the year because it matters because they want to make the postseason because it's a big deal no one cares about the last 25 games of the NBA season really uh, most of the time everybody just cares about the playoffs and I'm hoping that because the league is so talented because it's going to be so competitive to get one of those top 10 seeds to get to the play-in tournament I think that we're going to see a lot more interest towards the end of the year because there's just going to be a lot more teams actively fighting for trying to win some games when and in previous years, especially last year, every team in the league that wasn't going to be a true playoff contender wanted to lose as many games as possible. Now, of course, all this could completely change if a couple of guys, a couple of prospects look amazing in college or the G League or internationally. Obviously, that changes everything. If someone emerges, if we all of a sudden have a prize of the number one overall pick, then we're just going to go right back to where we were last year. It might not be as bad as last year, but there are definitely going to be teams that are going to want to add another big time young player to their group, to their young core. Uh, and that to me is going to be uh, the only thing really that I could see deter this kind of shift in terms of how taking is going to look this year is if for some reason someone randomly shows up and is awesome as a draft prospect.